Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Clay Falls. The Aggies were on the road this afternoon taking on Alabama in Tuscaloosa. Let's send things over to Tyler Shaw for a look at today's game. Tyler? Well, as the city skyline and Texas A&M grows, firefighters have tough challenges responding to high rises. Well, the new walkways are finished, making accessibility easier for all people wanting to see the site. Work was delayed a few days because of recent rain. Visitors coming inside also aren't leaving empty handed. The museum is handing out these posters of President Bush as a keepsake. The museum is open late until 8 o'clock tonight and tomorrow night. And they were armed with a gun. The convenience store clerk told them several times that they couldn't provide any cash and then she was shot several times. We just found out within the past 45 minutes or so that that woman died. I've never done this before so we'll see how many attempts it takes. Some of the issues have been mail coming in consistently to packages being left in unusual places. Here at the end of our first round of practice, I just checked the temperature on the grass where it's 96 degrees. These are some of the changes you'll see here at Shipwreck Grill and other restaurants. Things like disposable menus to single serve items from napkins and ketchup and mustard packets to limit the spread of contact between customers. There are also new rules on how close tables can be to each other. The minimum distance between tables is six feet. It's all anyone is talking about here in Leon County. It takes up the whole front page of this morning's newspaper in Buffalo. Kristen Lindsay's license to practice veterinary medicine could be taken away at the State Office of Administrative Hearings. The Texas A&M System Office of Federal Relations has been here in Washington for nearly four years, making sure Aggies are represented in the nation's capital. Thank you, Tyler. President Donald Trump tweeted that he's feeling well as he undergoes treatment for the coronavirus. The White House doctor issued a statement Saturday night saying President Trump is not yet out of the woods. Close to it, but good day today for golf if you're out there at a and playing with Mike Evans. Uh, perfect weather for that yeah, today. Yeah, and lemonade day was today. Lots of kiddos out serving up the lemonade. And All right. A lot of great did baseball. Did you heavy on him? I did not, <laughs> but I should, should have. That's a great, just last couple minutes, but that's some of the most exciting moments in sports, but it doesn't last very long. for Down the, the stretch they come. All right. Thank you very much, Kelly. You bet. A nice little break wearing jackets in April mm. is not that normal not for here, but here. like you said, summer will be here before we know it, and we'll mm. miss these uh, cooler days uh, we in certainly a couple will. months. Not so in, enjoy them while they last, yes. right? Yes. Thanks very much, mm -hmm. Mac. Well, we have plenty of baseball to talk about after the break as Sam Houston State plays two at Central Arkansas. Thank you very much, Eric. It looks like a beautiful week shaping up for all of us. That's our report for now. Thank you so much for joining us. Tune in tonight at 10. We'll see you then. And this is the roof from where it went upside down, then back on its side, and then sat right back upright, and that's, that's how it ended up. Clayton Cox's world literally turned upside down early Thursday morning. He and his expecting wife were in their home when a windstorm blew through, rolling it over and tearing it to pieces. It, it just kind of kept on rolling. Um, my wife was in the bathroom. Uh, I, it threw me into the wall and then out the window. This is the window Clayton Cox was thrown out. He says as it happened, the house continued to roll. Amazingly, he wasn't crushed. I've got two big gashes and they put just put some staples in. I got a bump on my head somewhere up there. His wife was at the doctor getting checked out. My wife is 11 weeks pregnant. She's got a lot of road rash. We both got a lot of road rash. A nearby church has a message about the wicked weather. It's a sentiment shared by Cox. You know, God works in mysterious ways. That's about all you can say. I mean, it, it, a house rolled over the top of me as I went through the, the window and I'm still here talking to you and I've got sti stitches or staples and that's it. So praise God. In Leon County, Clay Falls, News 3. AAA says nearly 4 million Texans will be driving to their destination this year. Getting there will also be less expensive. It's the busiest travel time of the year. Filling up is easier on the wallet, too. AAA says the statewide average for a gallon is $2.30. That's always a good thing. Paul Phillip is driving from Salado to Louisiana, hoping to avoid traffic. I'm hoping to avoid that by staying, you know, kind of north here and going from uh, from west to east on the, the northern uh, roads, you know, through the little towns. He and fellow drivers are expected to catch a break at the pump through the winter months because of increased oil production. This winter ought to be a good time for us to, to, to travel a little bit more and, and do so a little bit less expensively. Folks are also packing airports. Eastwood Airport tells me all their flights are booked Thursday. Last November, more than 6,800 people flew out of Aggieland. Well, I'm just looking forward to getting back home to seeing the rest of my family. Catherine Lovelady is flying home to Tennessee after visiting her daughter in College Station. Family's everything, so I just, it was just a, a really nice visit. For travelers I met with, the destination is worth the time and trouble to get there. Looking forward to the, uh, seeing some of my family members I haven't seen for years and some uh, 
some good food on Thanksgiving Day. In all, more than 54 million people are expected to travel this holiday week. Live in Bryan, Clay Falls, News 3. The summer heat is in full force and a hot car is no place for people or pets. Temperatures inside a vehicle within an hour could range up to almost 180 degrees inside the vehicle with the car turned off. Brian Firefighter and Paramedic Tyler Franklin says calls for people or pets in hot vehicles are common during summer. He showed us how a bystander should safely break a window if you ever need to. Typically, you're going to have your best chance of breaking the glass by going to the edges and the corners of the glass. We wanted to use items most of us might have. We started out with a knife that has a blunt metal tip. How hard that is. <laughs> so a lot more difficult at that point that you can now peel this glass out. I've never done this before, so we'll see how many attempts it takes. Firefighters have special tools to get into cars quickly. This is what firefighters use. It's called a spring assisted window punch and it takes the work out of getting in. KBTX legal analyst Shane Phelps says people shouldn't worry about legal implications if they are helping in an emergency situation. I think a clever lawyer certainly would invoke the Good Samaritan Act, but um, I do think that we really need specific targeted legislation to protect people uh, who, who take action to save animals and, and children in that circumstance. Back outside, Franklin says it's best to be prepared with some tools in your car. In Bryan, Clay Falls, News 3. This scene is all too familiar for movie theaters. For six weeks now, the theaters have been closed and their parking lots empty. Local theaters tell me even with new guidance from the governor, it's going to take time to reopen for business. The popcorn machines are empty, the hallway is dark, but Andrea Fletcher of the Premier Cinemas and Brian says this scene is coming to an end. We're all excited about the news. Fletcher is the general manager and says even though they're allowed to open on Friday, you'll have to wait a while. A little bit closer to summertime, okay. most likely. How we can uh, social distance our uh, guests in our auditoriums and how to work that out with ticket sales. Um, we will be working uh, on training our staff extra steps that they'll have to take on making sure that our guests and themselves are safe. The Queen Theater in downtown Bryan will also stay closed for now. They only have about 125 seats, which makes reopening harder. Having to keep it at just 25% capacity, for us here at the Queen, that means that very few people would be able to come because we have such limited seating. Um, we know that we will reopen probably late summer, early fall possibly. Getting consumer confidence back will also take time. We clean the seats after every show, but there will be some extra steps that, you know, we'll for sure have to take, you know, to just to ensure that everybody is, is comfortable when they come to, to a movie. Cinemark tells me they plan to reopen by midsummer. Management at Star Cinema Grill declined to discuss when they might reopen. They said that information for moviegoers will be posted online. Live in Bryan, Clay Falls, News 3. American flags and interesting yard art decorated Fraser's concrete at the corner of US 290 and Highway 6. Many people lined up to pay their respects to the family of Barbara Bush, including Suzanne Ellis. She wore pearls and blue as her family recorded the historical moment something that you only get to see maybe once in a lifetime, you know, and she's honored our, our country for so long and why not honor her in her time. Frazier's put out statues from all five branches of the military as a final salute to the First Lady. We hope they really get to see and appreciate the effort we put into it and to know that they're loved um, by seeing uh, the flags and everything. Fernando Gomez is the general manager at Frazier's. We wanted to pay, pay our respects to someone uh, that is highly, highly regarded and it is an honor to be able to express our feelings and to show our appreciation for her. Ty Gullick brought his family from Cyprus. It's very special. We took lots of pictures. We even got to see uh, George W. Uh, in the window as he drove by and uh, waving with gratitude. In Hempstead, Clay Falls, News 3. Hours before the train arrived, preparations were being made to honor a man who loved Aggieland. We always say that you know, once an Aggie, always an Aggie, and he's kind of been adopted into the family, right? right? Tony Watson owns Watson Signs and Monuments. He and his employees decorated their front yard for the once-in-a-lifetime train procession. We're all Americans. Today, this last week, we've all been Americans regardless of political aspect. 
Thousands gathered along the railroad tracks to see President Bush's funeral train. Rudy Schubert is a retired Air Force pilot that lives in Welburn. I served under him and I'm proud to have served under him. He was a great man and I used to fly his wife around quite a bit when I was in the military. Thank you, President Bush! Even the youngest took in the moment. That you could see the casket. I thought it was uh, pretty cool because you don't get to see something like that all the time. We've got a great seat to be able to, to, be able to celebrate the life of just a great man, whether you, whether you no matter what side of the political spectrum you're on, what a great man. In Welburn, Clay Falls, News 3. Anita Jean Randall is being remembered as a kind woman who really cared about her customers. Customers and neighbors told me today how she was killed doesn't make any sense. This Valero Corner store was closed Monday. A makeshift memorial of a few flowers were left by the front doors. 54-year-old Anita Jean Randall was shot while working behind the counter Sunday night. Police said she was taken to nearby Baylor Scott and White Hospital where she died. And I knew the lady, Anita, who had, who had been shot and, and killed. And so I wanted to come by and see if there was anything that, that I could do. Robert Mitch is a regular at the store coming by twice a week. She was very, very friendly. She was always friendly, always had a smile on her face. Randall lived nearby on Sarah Drive. Her family told me they'd been asked by police not to speak to the media, but they did show this photo. Stephen Alcala knew his neighbor, Anita, only in passing. I feel terrible for the family, obviously. They lost somebody, like, you know, who, whoever she was very close to, like, they lost somebody extremely close to them. And it's, it's just a tragedy that shouldn't happen. It was kind of senseless. After getting a tip, police tracked Lockett to Brenham, where he's from. We uh, looked up the person's driver license photo, matched that up, of course, with video to see if it's similar. And if so, then we'll use other investigative techniques in order to try to track him down. It's senseless. You know, she wouldn't have hurt him, she wouldn't have fought him. A sign here at the store says they will reopen at 6 a.m. tomorrow. We will keep you posted on funeral information. Live in College Station, Clay Falls, News 3. Chris Howard is healing up at Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center in Houston. Balloons decorate his room following a kidney transplant Wednesday. Everything went well. Um, everything went smooth as far as um, the kidney. It uh, started working immediately. There was no setbacks on that. So uh, when they removed it from Flo's body uh, to my body, everything went very smooth. Howard got the new kidney from a co-worker at Creekview Elementary in College Station. Flo Sebesta manages the cafeteria. KBTX was invited along as the two connected in the hospital Thursday afternoon for the first time after the surgery. Both are doing well. Like a rock star. I'm feeling fine. Rocky. Sore, but I'm fine. Howard has been dealing with kidney failure and cancer. He was looking at having to live life without working kidneys. Blessed that I was able to do it for him and his wife and his babies. He had this appeal for anyone considering becoming a donor. It's definitely a gift of life, and uh, I'll never be able to pay her back in any kind of way. Uh, to, you know, I'm just so grateful for it. And yeah, she immediately became my sister and uh, I'm her brother now. So friend, we're stuck together. I told her uh, no take backsies. In Houston, Clay Falls, News 3. This is all that's left of the workshop Kevin Fitzgerald was working in when the tornado hit. He says the wall started bowing and part of the building collapsed. All that happened in less than a minute. Called it right out from underneath this. See a little space in there? That's where I was. Kevin Fitzgerald has a storm story hard to imagine. He was working in his hobby shop on Coyote Run Road Wednesday afternoon when an EF2 tornado came crashing in. I felt myself get pulled and next thing I know I was doing, uh, I, I was going fast, I know that. It's through the air and getting hit by all kinds of things and then I, when I uh, landed, a bunch of stuff landed on top of me. His neighbor, Danny Morrison, with Epicure's Catering, came to help. I went over to see, see him, and he was in, in this building here, and he was on the, on the corner. He said that it lifted him and slammed him into a wall. The National Weather Service was surveying the damage Thursday. Meteorologist Dan Riley says this storm had winds of 120 miles per hour. This tornado didn't have a great appearance on radar. Uh, it didn't show up as even a thunderstorm, more of a shower. This one we think kind of spun up very quickly from the ground up and it's something we want to look back at to kind of understand better. Fitzgerald says he's fortunate. He walked out with a broken foot, cuts and bruises. I thought this is just like in the movie Twister, you know. I mean when I, when I went up in the air I was like holy because I, I remember clawing for the ground trying to stay on the ground. I told God I ain't dying in no tornado. No way.
Brazos County Emergency Management says Fitzgerald is the only injury from this storm. He says he does have insurance to replace the property and is leasing this building. Live in Brazos County, Clay Falls, News 3. Amazing story there. Clay, thank you for that.